We have a very unique slay tonight in Daily Fantasy Baseball because Max Scherzer is on it, and that is not unique by itself, but it is a slate where Max Scherzer is involved, and Scherzer might not be my top guy for DFS for tonight. In fact, he's not when I rank them out, and that's pretty rare. It doesn't happen very often, but I think it's because we have really good options for today, and one of them is a little bit lower salary than Max Scherzer and may surpass him as my top arm of the night. We'll break down who that is, where I'm ranking Scherzer, and much more to get you set for Monday Night Slate. Welcome on into the solo shot. That's right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and NumberFire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for NumberFire.com. Here to break down Monday's nine-game main slate with lock set for 7.05 p.m. Eastern for today. Weather for today, there is a chance of rain in Cleveland for the Guardians and Diamondbacks. It appears as though the rain will be moving out around first pitch, uh, but check back on the timing of that later on today. Also in Chicago for the White Sox and Royals, winds are out to center at 10 miles per hour. That's not as drastic there as it would be at Wrigley Field, but, you know, winds out to center, never a bad thing, and might want to look at some bats there. Potentially, we'll talk about that in things to watch later on, because I don't think one of the offenses is totally... Totally out of play. All that and more coming up later on. But first, a quick reminder to make sure you are subscribed to the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed. Coming up later on this week, we've got our PGA DFS breakdown for the final event before the FedEx Cup playoffs. We got NASCAR and UFC here every week as well. NFL just around the corner, now one month away. Kind of frightening, kind of exciting though. Uh, so a lot of good stuff here on the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed. Search for that wherever you get your podcasts. Hit subscribe, and if you like what you hear, leave us a rating and review as well. FanDuel's World Fantasy Baseball Championship for 2022 is coming up this September, and there are still chances to get yourself qualified. This year's live final will be in Chicago in September. The live final features $2 million in total prizes with half a million dollars going to first place. To get yourself entered into a qualifier for that event, go to FanDuel.com or download the FanDuel Fantasy app. Eligibility restrictions apply. Pitching preview for this Monday main slate. Max Scherzer, of course, is the highest salary pitcher on FanDuel coming in. At $11,500, Logan Webb is 10-4 with Luis Garcia at 10-2. John Gray comes in at $10,000 with Tarek Skubal at 98. Andrew Heaney. Back off the IL for his second start is 94 with Cal Quantrill, Mike Clevenger, Nathan Eovaldi, Zach Davies, Michael Kopech, and Brad Keller as the others at $8,000 or higher. So almost every time Scherzer's on a slate, it's going to mean Scherzer will be my top arm of the night. And as stupid as this may be, that is not the case tonight. Because I think I'm going to put John Gray number one at $10,000. And it's nothing against Scherzer. I just like Gray a lot. He's facing the Orioles at home. And... The Orioles are playing good ball, so it's not a super plus matchup, but they do strike out at a league average clip. Uh, it's a better matchup from that perspective than Scherzer's. And Gray really pitching well right now. He's been using fewer forcing fastballs across his past 11 starts. And in that time, he has a 3.15 skill interactive ERA with a 30% strikeout rate. Both of those numbers are second on the slate behind Scherzer among guys who are fully stretched out. And Gray also adds up with a 34% hard hit rate. So he gets strikeouts, suppressing hard contact, getting some ground balls. That's an elite combination across the board. And we've definitely seen the impact of this in this time because Gray has double-digit strikeouts twice. He's at eight-plus strikeouts in six out of 11 games. And that's even while being at home for just four of those 11 starts. He is at home tonight. I love the upside for John Gray. The floor is not that bad. I'm willing to be very high on him here all things considered, because of how good the situation is, because of how good he's pitching. I think John Gray is worth that, and I want to react by making him my number one guy by a hair above Scherzer. Again, nothing against Scherzer, just because I like Gray a whole lot for tonight. I will put Scherzer second, though. It is a revenge game here versus the Nationals, so birthday narrative last week for Scherzer, revenge game this week. It's a good matchup, too. 95 WRC plus versus righties with a 19% strikeout rate. And the matchup could get a lot better if Juan Soto winds up being traded before this game is played. We'll know that before lock. So, you know, we'll know uh, what that situation is, but it could get better. And it would make a, a lineup that is already not great um, make it pretty brutal, even if they don't strike out a whole lot. And Scherzer is pitching really well right now. 
We're up to seven starts on him with his slot usage being above 20%. And he has a 31% strikeout rate in that time with a 2.80 skill interactive ERA and a 3% walk rate. He leads the relevant guys in the slate in all three of those categories. We've seen Scherzer hit double digit strikeouts twice in seven games. He had nine in another. And sure, last week against the Yankees, he didn't light it up from a strikeout perspective with just six strikeouts there, but he went seven innings. He allowed no runs against that lineup. Pretty freaking good. So I have no issues with Scherzer. He's like gray. Uh, I think that I like gray more in that he saves me some salary, but Scherzer's a very firm second. It's really, it really is about Gray putting Gray first. It's about what he offers more so than what Scherzer does not bring. So Gray is one for me. Max Scherzer is number two. The top value for me is Mike Clevenger, but he'll be fourth on my list for pitcher overall because Luis Garcia will be above him too. We'll talk about him in things to watch. But Clevenger's facing the Rockies. They have an 88 WRC plus versus righties with a 33% fly ball rate. We can definitely use batters who are facing that. Clevenger is a bigger question here. He's been fine this year with a 2.76 skill interactive ERA, a 3.38 ERA, and a 24% strikeout rate. It's fine, and it's good enough to be considered. We have seen Clevenger making some tweaks here, using fewer cutters and sliders across his past six starts, and fewer wipeout pitches does tend to drag down a strikeout rate, and that's been the case for Clevenger. His strikeout rate is down a bit in this time, but the result's been really good. Um, And he's, you know, I think that that, is probably going to mean that he'll keep those cutters and sliders lower in the future, which might be a a slight dent to his strike error, which does hurt my enthusiasm for him a tiny, tiny bit. We have seen Clevenger benefit from some plus matchups in this time, and he did face the Rockies in this time, so it's a repeat matchup, but that game against the Rockies was before the All-Star break, which makes it less of a concern for me. And also, we saw Clevenger face the Diamondbacks three times in a five-star stretch, and... In the third start in that time, he had eight strikeouts. So Clevenger can overcome this. He ranks fourth for me. He's tops among the value plays. I might not get there, but I'm also not fully opposed because there is plenty to like here. So Clevenger, top value, fourth overall for me. And we'll talk about Garcia and things to watch. But for me, it's John Gray, one, and Max Scherzer, number two. Let's dive into the stacks here for tonight. Going back to the Mets. So all in on the Mets for tonight because they're facing Patrick Corbin. And Corbin got blasted his last time out. He's letting up a ton of hard contact right now. I think we'd be silly not to build around the Mets here from a stacking perspective. Corbin got just two outs in that most recent game. He let up six runs on 10 hits, and we have seen Corbin have some spikes. He's had big strikeout games, but the runs have still been there despite the increase in the strikeouts. He has let up four plus runs in four straight games, and most of that is due to the amount of hard contact he's letting up. We've seen Corbin mixing in more sinkers across his past 12 starts, and that has helped him increase his ground ball rate, but his hard hit rate allowed is 43%. That is the second highest mark on tonight's slate, and you're seeing the impact of that because his ERA in this time is 6.42. He's facing the Mets tonight. They have a 107 WRC plus against lefties. They're not the world's best lineup, but they're definitely a solid one here, and I'm willing to stack them as a result of this spot here facing off with Patrick Corbin for tonight. Within these Mets stacks, I'm curious if we'll see Eduardo Escobar here playing against lefties because obviously his playing time has been cut with all the additions they've made, but Escobar did hit sixth the last time they faced a lefty. He has a 274 ISO versus lefties this year with a 49% fly ball rate. I still think he's very usable if he plays, so I'm hoping he's in there personally because I think that's a guy we can definitely use. So Eduardo Escobar, if he does wind up playing, a guy I will use for DFS because he still has a lot of pop against lefties and has had that even in a down year for him in 2022. For our second stack, last week we talked about Spencer Watkins. He was facing the Rays in that time, and I was super wishy-washy on that Rays offense because Watkins was limiting hard contact going into that game. The Rays did not blow up there with the just three runs, but they did get a lot of hard contact against Watkins with a 62% hard hit rate. So now Watkins back out there tonight and facing the Rangers. And I'm going to stack the Rangers because of the way things stack up here. The Rays in that game against Watkins had 13 hard hit balls. Part of that was the high number, the high hard hit rate, but also they put 21 balls in play. There were just four strikeouts there, no walks for Watkins. 
And in five starts since Watkins came back to the big leagues, he has a 19% strikeout rate with a 4% walk rate. So he's letting up a lot of balls in play. Now, that hard hit rate in that time is up to 40%, and the fly ball rate is 43%. That's a profile we can stack against. Now, Watkins has had success in this time. He has a 1.93 ERA. He's let up just six total earned runs, and you know three of them came last week. But before that, only three earned runs and four starts. But I think we can still stack against him, and I will do so with this Texas Rangers lineup for tonight as my number two stack here behind the Mets. I do want to be high on the righties in the process here because righties have a 508 slugging percentage versus Watkins this year and a lot more fly balls. So Adelise Garcia, the top priority on this team, Marcus Semien second. That prioritization ladder is made easier by the fact that Corey Seager is not fully healthy right now and might not play. I'll get to the lefties after that. Uh, lefties and switch hitters, I should say. But to me, Garcia and Semien, the top two priorities within this Rangers stack because of the numbers Watkins has had versus righties so far this year. As far as our third stack goes, I feel pretty obligated to rank the Astros here. They're facing Nathan Eovaldi, and it's looked pretty rough for him recently, and I don't think the roughness is fluky. The velocity's been down here for Eovaldi, and velocity's important for everybody, but... I think it's potentially more so important for a guy like Eovaldi. And this is something that happened in his final start before he hit the injured list because that kind of foretold what was going to happen there. And he hasn't fully bounced back yet, though. The velocity was a bit better last time out. In four starts with the rough velocity, he has a 15% strikeout rate. He's letting up a 41% hard hit rate. And not surprisingly, Eovaldi's getting hammered. He's made three starts since he returned, and he's let up 16 earned runs in those three starts. He's let up at least three earned runs in all of those starts. Part of that is tough matchups, uh, but he had Cleveland last week. They're not a super imposing offense, and the Astros also very tough. So the tough matchups thing does not change here. It's possible Yavaldi gets the velocity back tonight. If he does, I'll back off going forward, but... He wasn't necessarily like lights out even before the hard contact or before the velocity dip. The velocity, again, was better last time out, but he had just one strike out there and still got knocked around initially. So I'm going to keep on stacking against Eovaldi for now, especially when it's an offense as good as this one. Both the righties and lefties are in play here. He Eovaldi lets up more fly balls to lefties, so I'll prefer them. They'll be my top guys, but he also gets fewer strikeouts versus the righties. So to me... In terms of ranking out the guys to prioritize within the, the Astros, I'll be highest on Alvarez and Tucker to get the lefty stuff in there, but the righties are also fully fine. So lefties highest for me, then the righties after that uh, within this Astros stack. Righties are fine. I just prefer Alvarez and Tucker in general because they're pretty fun, but uh, same thing is true for tonight as well. Let's stick with the Astros here and talk about their starting pitcher, Luis Garcia, here and things to watch. Even Scherzer and Gray going. I do want to talk about Garcia because he's really good, too. He's facing the Red Sox. It's a pretty good matchup right now with all the injuries they've got. And Garcia has a 27% strikeout rate across his past 10 starts. He's let up a 30% hard hit rate. It's very good. He's at home. I've got him projected for 6.5 strikeouts for tonight. That's about one behind both Scherzer and Gray. So not quite as high as them, but it's high enough to be at least worth mentioning. And I think that Garcia, pretty fun. So Luis Garcia, number three for me, for me tonight above Mike Clevenger, who would be number four. The Yankees are facing Marco Gonzalez, and he's led up a 3.78 ERA since he's been filtering in more sinkers in his approach. And that's pretty good, but he led up three home runs to the Astros two starts ago. That game was in Seattle, and now he goes to Yankee Stadium. Not a huge ground ball guy. So the Yankees definitely work here. I will love Glaber Torres once again. I don't quite put them in the top three. I, I want to go uh, with the Mets, the Rangers, and the Astros above them. But the Yankees, as always, a pretty rock-solid stack for today as well. We talked about using guys against Michael Kopech in the past, and I'm still open to that. The problem is he's facing the Royals. And, you know, the Royals' offense has been a bit depleted, but... I kind of think that they've got some fun guys here with their new look offense. MJ Melendez uh, has looked good in the majors. Vinny Pascantino uh, and Nick Prado both had good numbers in the minors. Prado actually has some speed too. So whether it's Melendez, Pasquantino, Prado is like a three-man stack with Salvador Perez on the right-hand side, or if you just want to go with like some one-offs between those three slash Perez, 
I kind of don't mind it. I think the Royals are interesting, which feels really weird to say now that we're in the month of August, but you know, I'm kind of on board. So the Royals, interesting for one-offs, potentially uh, an off-the-wall kind of stack. I'm not opposed to seeing how things go for tonight. So the Royals, a team to, to monitor, especially those young lefties for today. Speaking of the Royals, let's go here to our dinger calls for tonight. We'll get to the, the boring one in a second. But I kind of think I want to go with Vinny Pasquantino as being... The fun home run call for tonight, because in the minors, Pasquantino did not strike out 12% strikeout rate in AAA, and he had a 296 ISO. He had a 43% fly ball rate in a small sample in the majors. He has an 11.6% barrel rate, so he's hitting the ball hard. It is not translated to power yet. He has just three home runs, but... I think he's making the kind of contact that could eventually lead to dingers. Wind's blowing out, so Vinny Pasquantino... Welcome to the Dinger Call section for the first time in your career for this Monday slate. So Pasquantino, the fun one. We'll go Pete Alonzo for the boring one. We'll end on a low note, but uh, Alonzo, he's good. So, you know, don't need much more explanation. But hopefully having Pasquantino as being the fun one will make up for Alonzo being pretty boring as our boring home run call for today. That's all we got here for this Monday slate of MLB DFS. Should be a pretty fun one. Again, it's it's nerve-wracking to not have Scherzer sure first, but... I just like John Gray a lot. I'll have a lot of both, so it's not going to matter too much, but I think it should be a delightful slate for tonight. Once again, do not forget to subscribe to the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed wherever you get your podcasts. Also, if you watch this over on YouTube, when it goes up on there, on the FanDuel YouTube page, hit subscribe there, hit the notification bell as well, hit the like button. All that does help us out a bunch, and we appreciate those of you who have done so already. If you've got any questions for me, I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. You can also follow the FanDuel Podcast Network at FanDuel Podcast. Big thank you to everyone for tuning in for today. Good luck to you with your MLB DFS lineups. We'll talk to you once again tomorrow to break down Tuesday's slate. This has been the solo shot right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network.